Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Like she said, I am Sylvia King. I am the founder of Train Breaker Girl in 2015. Just a brief testimony, I was on the Riverside, and a man stuck a knife in my uh, chest, said that he'll stab me, he'll kill me, he actually was the word. And that day brought on anxiety, depression, and all that, and that's when Chain Breaker Girl was birthed out. And Chain Breaker Girl is a foundation that you don't have to be stuck in your past, you can be free today. Amen. But on today, God changed my name to Chain Breaker Girl. And later on, I'll get a chance to tell y'all why I am now Chain Breaker Girl. I do have some notes because I want to teach you That's just right. a little bit. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. Have anybody experienced any losses? Can you raise your hand if you experienced any losses? Whether you lost your job, whether you lost loved ones, whether you lost friends, relationships, pets, marriages, divorces. That's the part of grief. And today I want to teach you about coping with grief. I have a couple of cousins here I'm glad to see because they are part of the ministry that have uh, been uh, upon my life, my friend Keisha. I just know uh, I have a little several people that had experienced grief. But grief necessary don't have to be your loved one. Right. And grief is now first I'm gonna go here. Before we deal with grief, we must identify three things. What is grief? What are you grieving? How do you know you are grieving? Those are the three things you must identify. What is grief? Grief is a deep sorrow, especially that caused by someone's death. What are you grieving? Are you grieving a loved one? Like I said, did you know that grief could be your pet, your friendships, your relationships, changing of a job, losing a job, moving away, and etc. What are you grieving today? Ask yourself. I'm going to be talking to y'all because I want y'all to talk back to me. Okay. I found out when somebody talks back to you, you get it deposited in your soul and your spirit. Right. So ask yourself, what are you grieving? And if you can identify what you're grieving, you're on your way to know how to process grief. Mm -hmm. How do you know you're grieving? You have emotional grief. Shock of disbelief. I can't believe this happened. I mean, that's how it literally was. I can't believe my mom passed. And I know a God that can save, that he can deliver, that he can set free, he can raise you from the dead, and he didn't do mine. I had a real problem with that. Sadness, emptiness, guilt, regret. It was too late. I couldn't change nothing. I couldn't do nothing about the situation. If I would have known my mom was sick, I would have took her in a long time ago. But that wasn't the will of God. And you'll find that out as well later. Anger. Like I said, I was so mad at him, I turned my back on him. I was like, I'm not breaking another chain. He could have healed my mama. He did, mom. And like, what is that? And you know a God. He raised up Lazarus. And he couldn't raise up Glenda Taylor just for me. I mean, I was having such a pity party. I was like, God, I can serve you the best way I know how. And you're not going to heal my mama? You can't do that for me? And that's the day when I turned my back on God. I'm like, I'm not breaking another chain. I'm not going to church no more. Because mm -hmm. I was so hurt. My soul was hurt. Mm -hmm. My soul was hurt. Your physical grief changes in sleep patterns. I couldn't sleep. I was up all night long. Changing that appetite. At one minute I couldn't eat. Then I was eating everything. Mm -hmm. Crying. Bust out the crying. No particular time. You don't know when it's coming. Headaches, body aches, fatigue, pain, weight loss, and weight gain. And I did them both. Wow. Now that we have established how you grieving or what grieving looks like to you, now we can go through the steps, Keisha, that move me into my process of grieving. Step one, 
you must establish a relationship with the creator. Mm. After all that anger, after all that madness, I still had to come back to Jesus Christ because he was my strength. Mm -hmm. We must lay the foundation down because he's our helper. He's the only one that can get us through our situation. He's the only one that can get us through our losses, through our grief. And Proverbs 3 and 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So we must invite him in in everything we do. Step two is pray for yourself. Self prayer keeps us aware of our hearts and enable us to draw on God as our only source and strength. Jude 1 and 20 says, keep building up yourselves in your faith as the Holy Spirit help you to pray. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that somebody else is praying for you. So I thank you for your prayers, Carl. I thank you for your prayers. Shit, you know you my girl. I thank you, Keisha. But it's nothing like knowing the Holy Spirit for yourself. And the assurance when you pray and you have the relationship with God, you know that he hears you and he come to rescue you in the time of grief. Step three, find a safe place or a safe haven. For me, it was counseling. I found my safe place in my counselor. Who or what does it look like for you? What person can you trust that you can go to and you can talk to and you can let your hair down and you can tell your feelings and you can express your feelings and you can be angry. You can show whatever emotion you want to show with no judgment zone. Also, realize when you're not talking to professionals, and you're just dealing with grief the way you know how. Sometimes your loved ones don't know how to help you doing grief. Sometimes they just say the wrong things like, Tree, be strong. It's time to move on now. Please don't cry. You don't have to cry. You've been there too long. It's time to get up. Those are the words that you should not say to a grieving person. Because when you're grieving, don't you think if I could get up, I would? When you're hurting and you want to get up and you can't, when your mind is pondering over and over, what could I have been different? What could I have done to change this situation? And I'm stuck in this grieving place. Trust me, when you're hurting, you want to get up. No one wants to stay down. No one wants to stay in depression. No one wants to feel hurt, but it's a part of the process. So when you are grieving, sometimes our loved ones don't know how to help us. They just don't want us to hurt. So they say things like that. They say keep moving. They say it's time to go on. That's their way of showing you that they love you. They don't know. But one thing I thought about that was if they keep showing up, if they keep giving you empathy, if they keep showing you that they care, trust me, you are winning. There are people that don't have support system when you're losing a job, when you're losing a loved one. Sometimes you don't have nobody to help you. You don't have nobody in your circle. You don't have nobody in your corner. So when they show up, although they said something wrong, keep in mind you're winning because they showing up for you. I experienced a time in my grieving and when I lost my mom, I didn't have a support system that I thought I had or should have had or I thought certain people should have been there. No, God don't work like that. He'll put the right people at the right time to come and rescue you. So when you think that you have the right people in your circle, you think they're going to stand up tall for you, don't look for them that way. Look for how God going to bring them. And then stop worrying about who wasn't there. Look at who was in your circle when that time happened. When you lost your job, when you lost your friend, when you lost your husband or your wife, whatever it may be, look at who was in your life and don't worry about who was it. Step four, feel your emotions. 
then deal with your emotions. Can y'all say that with me? Feel your emotions and deal with your emotions. It is good to feel your emotions. It's a part of the grieving process. So if you feel angry, it's okay. Tell your sister it's okay. I'm telling you, I'll tell your sister it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If you want to tell your sister it's okay. It's okay. If you're sad, tell them it's okay. If you want to cry, just do it. Like like you said, just do it. Cry. Cry again and cry again. Cry some more. And if you want to do it now, cry now. It's okay. Tell your sister it's okay. When you show your emotions and when you feel your emotions, it starts the progress to going. But if you don't feel your emotions, it prolongs the grieving process. Jesus even expressed his emotions on several occasions, Keisha. In Matthew 26 and 39, Jesus was suffering at the garden of Gethsemane. He prayed to the Father, say if it's possible to take this cup. He said if it's possible. But it's not my will, but let your will be done. See, for us, we don't know the will of God, but we have to trust the will of God. That his hand is right in all he do. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through your pain and when you're going through your grieving, it's okay because Jesus know how we feel. Mm -hmm. On another occasion, he weep with Lazarus. He was in relationship with Lazarus. He loved Lazarus and he knew he was going to rise Lazarus up. But guess what Jesus did? He weep. He showed his emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to show our emotions. We have to feel our emotions. And we have to deal with our emotions. Ask me how do you deal with your emotions? How do you deal with your emotions? If you got to write it down, it's just this simple. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to give us some real business. <laughs> if you got to write it down, write it down. If you got to talk it out, talk it out. Do whatever you have to do to express your feelings. It's a part of the healing process. And you on your way to a healthy grieving. Step five, accept what has happened to you and own your truth. Accept what has happened to you and own your truth. The truth is, Jan, trauma has happened. The truth is, losses has happened. The truth is, grief is in your house. The truth is, grief is in your house. When do you know when grief is over? Ask me. I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you when grief is going to be over. Only you know when grief is over. Don't allow anyone to push you. Don't allow anyone to tell you that it's time for it to be over. I am learning to cope with losing my mother. You are the only one that can tell you when it's over. So do not rush it. It is your race. You determine how fast or how slow you go. It is totally up to you. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 says, The race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. So tell your sister, run your waist. And run it your pace. Say it again, run your race. Run your race. And run it at your pace. And run it at your pace. And the last one is give thanks. First Thessalonians and 5 and 18 says, Give thanks in every situation, every circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read that again. Give thanks in every situation. I feel God. <laughs> in every circumstance. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Although we may not understand God's will for our life, but we have to trust that he knows what he is doing with us. Romans 8 and 28 says, Shane, All things, Nisi, work together for the good of them who love him. So no matter what you're going through, Romans 8 and 28. You know, I used to think, you know, that's just a good uh, scripture. It make you feel good and sound good. But when I found out, when I lost Glenda Faith, all 
things really did work out for my good. I didn't know how it was gonna work out because I knew, could nobody tell me. I know I lost my mind any time over telling God I'd turn my back on. Yeah, I went crazy. I know I did. You know, now that I look at it now. Yeah, I went crazy. But when I realized that Romans 8 and 28, when the foundation is set, it was it was set in my womb. Wow. To serve the Lord. Uh -huh. So no matter how far I went, I still right. can't get right. because all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Yes. And remember this God is not trying to hurt you, mm -hmm. but He is trying to get something to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Ask yourself, are you what is He trying to get? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what is He trying to get? Yes. Ask yourself, what is He trying to get to you? Mm -hmm. Is He trying to humble you? Is He trying to build you? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, only you know what he's doing with you. When I begin to take these steps, I begin to see purpose in my pain. When I begin to take these steps, there is purpose in my pain. And I want to tell you all today, whatever you're going through, there is purpose in your pain. I didn't know or understand at the time what he was doing. I started these steps and God had already predestined this to happen. He really did. He already predestined this to happen. He already knew when he was going to take my mama. But guess what? We all have a birth date. And we all have a death date. It was already predestined. And even though when I felt like it and I was hopeless, God had already predestined this thing. That is something that we all will encounter. We all have a birthday, and we all have a death day. So one day, all of us is going to encounter that day. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. So no matter, of course we hear me, it's going to hurt. Yes. But it was already predestined. Yes. It's nothing that we could do about it to change it. Mm -hmm. He already knew you was going to lose that job. He already knew you was going to get a divorce. It was predestined. Yes. He know all things. Yes. We don't know the thoughts and the plans that he have for us, but it is to prosper us and be in good health. Mm -hmm. So there is a time to be born and a time to die. Mm -hmm. A time to kill in a time to heal. Some things need to be killed out of our lives. Yes. We may want to hold on to a job, mm -hmm. but God trying to push you into your own business, they yes. need to be killed. Mm -hmm. yes. And there's a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. I was in my breakdown season for two years, but now I'm build up. Right. A time to weep, and I still weep, y'all, but it's a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. In whatever season you in, it won't last always. So today I'm in my dancing season, Mom. I'm in my dancing season because I found purpose in my pain. I found out who I was in God. I found out who was for me and who was not for me. I moved from a stuck place. I moved my relationship with God got stronger. I became more grateful. I became more humble. And in my pain, I became a Christian life coach. I found purpose again. I found chain breaker and pearl was established. If I never experienced losing my mom, I will never be here today to tell you he can break chains. That you can uh, break chains of grief and you can cope with it properly. I would have never told you that you can become a pearl. Something so pure, something so elegant, something so beautiful. And one thing about a pearl when it's in its making, it has to stay wrapped up. Mm -hmm. It has to stay in the shell. And it don't come out until it's safe and it is ready to come out. Mm -hmm. So for two years, God had me exactly on Valentine's Day. When I lost my mom, he had me wrapped up, covered. He was developing me. He was making me. He was strengthening me. He was directing me. He was guiding me. 
just for this day to tell you that you can cope and grieve. Yeah. So in the earth realm, I lost Glenda Faye Taylor, mm -hmm. but in the heavenly realm, she just still sleeping. Yeah. So today I want to tell you that God was building me. He was shaping me. And I want to admonish you to keep pushing. Be the pearl that God has created you to be. Tell somebody, be the pearl. Be the pearl. God has created you to be. Live again, sister. Live again, sister. Dream again. Dream again. Laugh again. Laugh again. Dance again. Dance again. So you can be the pearl. So you can be the pearl. God has created you to be. So it's really no love lost. I gained so much more. And before I take my seat, can you imagine who you're going to help? Can you imagine? Can you imagine who you're gonna help? So sometimes, you hear that? Sometimes you got to lose again to win again. So I wanna tell you, take those losses. Lose that job. Lose that loved one. Because you're gonna win again. Yeah. Yeah.